Welcome to this video diving into the WJC data booklet. In this video I want to talk about the equations that appear in this document and what the different symbols mean. I would suggest people should make notes like I've done on your own data booklets so that in lessons you can find the relevant equations a lot quicker during your studies. Okay the first thing I want to go through is what the different symbols mean. Now quite a lot of them have multiple meanings, so it's important we know the context of an equation. I've put them in alphabetical order and then put the Greek letters at the end. Okay, so that's A to G. And here's H to R. And there we have T to X. Finally, we've got the Greek letters. Alpha, Delta, remember small delta, small change, large delta, large change. Epsilon, now we also use that for EMF in, in some cases, um, but not always on the WJC. Theta, normally angles, but we can also use it for temperature in degrees Celsius. Lambda, we generally use for wavelength, but can also be decay constant if we're dealing with radioactivity. Rho is probably the most confusing and it's vital you know the context here especially as density and momentum have very similar formulas. Okay, the first page of the actual data booklet is on the front cover and this is, has our useful constants and some conversions. All right, on to the actual equations. So what I want to do here is I'm going to try and group the equations together as much as possible and then go rather than go through each one individually. The first column on, the, on this page is the equations you need for unit 1 and the second column is the equations you need for unit 2. The first one here is for density, that's all by itself. Our next four are exuvat. I would also generally write in the fifth equation as well, like so. We got Newton's second law and momentum. The next set is all to do with energy. Our definition for work followed by different types of energy strain, kinetic, work done, change in speed, power and efficiency. The next session is all on solids under stress. Here the most important thing to remember is Young's modulus is stress over strain and then work back from there when we're trying to work out the other symbols. Our final two equations are for black body, linking temperature to power and maximum wavelength emitted. We are missing an equation here that is useful and that's linking power or luminosity, remember they're the same thing, to intensity. So intensity is power per unit area, so it's power divided by 4 pi r squared, where r is the distance between the observer and the emitter. Here under these, these in this table we have the key con quantum numbers for the fundamental particles that we need to know about. From these, you can determine the quark makeup of protons and neutrons. Okay, on to unit two. The first seven are for electricity. Just remember here, this capital E is for EMF and big I, little r, is lost volts due to internal resistance. Remember, little r, we use for internal resistance. I would also add the equations for resistors. So series, we simply add, so R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4, etc. And parallel, we add the reciprocals. So 1 over R equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, etc. Moving on. The next seven are for waves. The tricky one out of these is Young's double slits. Remember here, A is slit spacing. 
delta y is fringe facing or the gap between two bright or two dark fringes and d is the distance between the screen and the slit. The final two equations are for quantum effects, the photoelectric effect and photon momentum or the de Broglie wavelength. Okay, so that's the end of AS. So in units one and two, you would get these pages, the front page, this page, and then the maths page only. The A2 side, unfortunately, is a bit mixed up. Rather than being sorted into units three and four, it's a bit of a pain, but generally though, unit three is on the left hand side and unit four is on the right hand side. Okay, so on our left hand side, the first six are for circular motion. The missing one here that I would add in is our equation linking omega to f. So omega is two pi f. We use that quite often, so I'd write it in. The next six are for SHM, simple harmonic motion. Starting with the definition for simple harmonic motion, uh, and moving on. Now, key thing to remember here is epsilon can only be zero, pi by two, or minus pi by two, depending on the initial conditions. To work out which one it is, you need to use your knowledge of sine graphs and any initial conditions that you are given. The final nine in this column are gas laws and kinetic theory. Key thing to remember here is that capital R and N mean we're dealing with moles of gas, and K and little n are for molecules of gas. We also define W as work done by the gas, meaning that if work is positive, the internal energy of the gas goes down. They did sneakily put in a unit four equation right at the bottom of this page. Don't miss it, it's our definition of capacitance. The top five on the right hand side are for capacitors. Remember, this is for charging a capacitor, and this one is for discharging a capacitor. We can substitute V for Q in any of these. Current, slightly different as it's the rate of flow of charge. So the equation changes slightly. Um, if you know how to differentiate these equations, you can do that. Um, if you don't, best thing to do is think about the shape of the graph and go from there. You're generally gonna be asked to either sketch graphs or you'll be given other means for calculating the current. This next group of 10 are for gravitational and electric fields. If you see a capital G and an M, it's for gravity. If you see an epsilon and a Q, it's for electricity. Now remember, when using Coulomb's law or any law of electrical fields, instead of using one over four pi epsilon naught, you can use the approximation, which is on the front page of your data booklet, which is that one over four pi epsilon naught is roughly nine times 10 to the nine. Okay, final five here are for space. We've got Doppler shift, the critical density of the universe, Kepler's and Kepler's third law for two bodies where the center is not with it, center of uh, rotation is not within one of them. The final two here are for unit three and relate to nuclear physics. Our definition for activity um, and our decay rate. Over the next page, we've got some more nuclear physics equations. And then our final section is on magnetic or B fields. Key thing here is there's a strange use of N and A little n means turns per meter capital n is the number of coils and a most people would use an r instead of an a here that um, that is the distance from the wire you are measuring the field from this next section is all the optional units um, go through this going to go through this perhaps in a different video the final part of the data booklet is missed by quite a lot of the students and that's the maths part. People don't look at it because we don't generally perhaps go through it and use it in lessons so often. People miss this bit. It is important though and gives some key formula that you will need to use. It also has the SI prefixes for those of you who don't know them, especially some of these are rare ones that don't get used very much. We have some key area and volume formulas and then some basic trig and Pythagoras' theorem. Now the last, the very last section are the log rules. 
So these we'll need in year 13 for when we are manipulating especially some of the capacitance and radioactive decay equations. Okay, thanks for watching this. Uh, been a whistle stop tour of the data booklet. Um, like I said earlier, make sure you're making notes. You might want to stop this, replay it, go through it. Make notes across your own data booklet, adding in any other equations that I mentioned in class um, or I mentioned here. Um, if you like the video, then subscribe. Um, if you didn't like it, still subscribe. Leave us a comment uh, what other things you'd like to see us do videos on. Alright, follow us on Twitter for regular updates of what we're up to. Alright, thank you for watching. Thank you.